Hi there. Welcome to my channel, Michelle's Analysis. So we're going to talk about the Petito versus Laundry lawsuit and why I think there's going to be a battle of the experts coming up in the jury trial that's currently scheduled for May 13th. Now, this case is an emotional distress lawsuit. Gabby Petito's parents are claiming that a statement or statements made by one of the defendants, attorney Stephen Bertolino, gave them false hope. In other words, it was a lie. They're claiming, Gabby's parents are claiming, that Steve Bertolino and the Laundries, Christopher and Roberta Laundry, Brian Laundry's parents, Brian Laundry's the boyfriend who admitted to killing Gabby Petito tragically, whether Steve Bertolino and Brian Laundry's parents were aware of Gabby Petito's whereabouts, or in fact that Brian Laundry had killed Gabby Petito, and instead they made a statement that was basically false. You know, it is our hope. Let me read it to you. It is our hope that, where did I put the notes? Here it is. It is our hope that the search for Miss Petito, these words matter. These words matter. This is the basis of the lawsuit. Was this statement false? And did it cause emotional distress to Gabby Petito's parents? And again, it's going to be a trial by jury, so a jury has to decide. So here's the statement that's the basis of the lawsuit that Gabby Petito's parents are claiming was false and caused them emotional distress. This is a statement, one of the statements that Steve Bertolino made, I think it was September 14th, five days before Gabby Petito's body, tragically, was found in the Grand Teton National Park. Here's the statement. It is our hope that the search for Miss Petito is successful and that Miss Petito is reunited with her family. The search is successful and she's reunited. So was that a statement false? Did they know at the time that she was dead and they said something different? That's something that they're going to have to prove, right? They're going to have to prove the emotional distress damages that these words caused Gabby Petito's parents' emotional distress. So who do they call at a trial? They're going to call expert witnesses. So let's talk about these expert witnesses. I think at this point, there are two that are being called by, uh, by the defense and one so far by Gabby Petito's parents. So let's look at, this is, you know me, I like to look at the, the court filings. We're going to look at the actual court filings. So before I get there, I just want to say thank you to all of those of you who do subscribe to my channel. Thanks for supporting my work. And do subscribe, hit that like button, and leave your analysis. Again, this is simply my opinion. I'm curious to see what you think. And if you want to contribute to me making these videos, I'll put a PayPal link in the description box below the video. So thank you very much for joining me. So let's take a look at what it is. It's called Schedule A. What it is that the um, Gabby Petito's parents and Steve Bernalino want these experts to produce and why these reports are important, right? The battle of the experts. We know, we can guess, or I know, <laughs> that Gabby Petito's parents are going to put on an expert. The, we'll call them the treating psychiatrist, psychologist, therapist, who's going to say how much Gabby Petito's parents suffered, anxiety, depression, you know, they've said that their lives were falling apart. It's terrible, terrible. For weeks, they were trying to find their daughter and she was murdered, right? Murdered, De uh, Brian Laundrie admitted to that. And then Brian Laundrie's parents, Christopher and Roberta Laundrie and Steve Bertolino are going to say, no, no, no. They didn't, it wasn't severe emotional distress. We didn't make the statement. It wasn't directed at you. It was basically a public statement. We, we didn't say anything false. We didn't intend to harm you in any way. And they're going to put an expert or two. There's uh, one professor, Professor Simon, who's probably going to be testifying as to the role of an attorney-client relationship. And it was an ethical statement made by Bertolino or, you know, what the role of an attorney does. Because we have to make, sometimes we make statements and sometimes we don't make statements. But words matter. And if those statements are proven to be false and to cause damages, as Gabby's parents allege, then the Laundries and Steve Bertolino may be on the hook for damages, all right? So let's take a look at, here's one example of one of the deposition notices 
and the request for documents that uh, in this case, Gabby, Gabby's parents are requesting. Now this was just filed on the 15th. And again, I'm sorry, I skipped over that. So this is a court filing. It says plaintiff's notice of taking deposition deuces take them of Deborah O'Day, uh, who I assume you guys can read all these <laughs> letters, who's a therapist. Um, whenever deuces take them. So they're referring to the requesting documents. So let's read it. So please take notice by and through counsel, blah, blah, blah. We will take the deposition by oral exam. So they're going to be asking questions of uh, Deborah O'Day and it's set for January 30th and it's remote. So I assume this is by Zoom. Uh, this deposition is being taken before a person authorized, blah, 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 for purpose of testimony, evidence in a case. And the witness shall, so Miss O'Day needs to bring the following documents. And I wrote here, and I'm sorry for my terrible handwriting, Professor Simon, I think it's the one who's the legal scholar who's going to talk about attorney client, what an attorney's duty is, you know, whether or not Steve Bertolino, his duty was to make the statement, whether it was an ethical statement. I don't know. We'll have to see how they're going to be using Professor Simon. His deposition is scheduled for February 13th. Then we have SB, which is Steve Bertolino, is requesting to take the deposition of Robert Gordon, who is a therapist who I think was treating uh, Gabby's parents. So I imagine Dr. Gordon's going to be giving testimony about uh, the statements that uh, the Gabby's parents made, you know, describing their physical health, their mental health, his opinion as to how uh, you know, how they were doing during this time, whether they were under severe emotional distress, et cetera, right? But it's going to be a battle of the experts, as you know, basically it's Professor Simon and O'Day are going to be testifying on behalf of the defense. And then Dr. Gordon is going to be testifying as to what he observed that the Gabby's parents were suffering emotional distress. So what's interesting about this is what are they asking these experts to bring to these depositions here's schedule a so i thought you might be interested you know what is it that we lawyers seek how can we test the opinion of an expert we want to know what they rely on are there studies out there how much time did they spend with gabby's parents how many sessions what did gabby's parents say that they were you know what was the distress that was happening depression anxiety um, lack of sleep. I mean, there is tragedy. They were going, trying to find their daughter. Um, and you can only imagine um, the stress that they went through. So here are the things that Gabby's parents attorney is requesting that this expert provide in the deposition. Now, I don't know why, maybe in Florida, they don't ask for these materials ahead of time. Um, before they start asking questions, I don't know what the process is in Florida, but let's look and see what they're requesting. So they want their resume, you know what, they want to see what's the background, what's the qualification of this person coming in as an expert, a list of all cases that they have testified in as an expert witness. And why that's important is you want to find out, have they talked, have they testified in any other cases regarding emotional stress? What amounts to emotional stress? What, you know, how would they clinically conclude that someone's under emotional distress? Have they testified more for plaintiffs or for defendants? Is there anything in there, you know, anything in those other transcripts or trial testimony that they gave that a defense attorney or a plaintiff's attorney can use against this expert? You know, they're testing the veracity, the credibility and the experience and the foundation. What's the basis of the opinion that this expert, because the expert's coming in to say, you know, in this case, that in their opinion, that they don't think that Gabby's parents suffered emotional distress or severe emotional distress, or that it was caused by any of these statements that were made by Steve Bernalino. That would be, I imagine, what a defense expert witness would be testifying. Now, a plaintiff's expert witness on behalf of Gabby's parents is going to be saying, you know, based on everything that they talked about, what they were suffering based on their statements, based on their past experience with other people under similar circumstances, which is going to be interesting because I think this is a pretty unique circumstance. Um, you know, they form the opinion that they were under severe emotional distress and it was caused by that statement. We'll have to see. 
But you know who makes the determination here? It's up to the jury. Experts come in to provide a jury with information, with an opinion that the jury can rely upon in concluding liability or no liability. But jurors don't have to, you know, they don't have to take uh, the opinion of an expert. They can weigh it, but they don't have to rely upon it, right? Because they are the ultimate fact finders and they're the ones, the jurors are the ones who make the determination as to whether or not a defendant is liable or not liable, okay? So they wanted, they're doing some digging here. They want to find out if you testified before as an expert, you know, do you have, you have those cases involved emotional distress or were they dealing with other disorders or um, other symptoms? Did they give testimony that's different? You know, all of that. And they want the entire file. So all the stuff that uh, Day collected relating to her testimony did, you know, was she provided with any documents and materials regarding this case produced by any of the parties? Did she look at the uh, Dr. Gordon's, I assume it's doctor, Dr. Gordon's file on his evaluation of both Joseph Petito and Nicole Schmidt? You know, did this expert consider the report of the therapist? What other things did this expert consider? Look at all the medical records. Did they look at the medical records relating to Gabby's parents? Any affidavits, any notes, tapes that you generated or anything that was handwritten or electronic format? So as the expert is going through the medical file or the reports from the therapist or anything else, what were they relying upon when they came to this opinion? What did you consider in forming your opinion? All deposition or trial transcripts or exhibits referred, reviewed by you. Again, this is an expert who's looking at the file, looking at reports, looking at conclusions of other witnesses and coming up, based, coming up with their own opinion based on their experience and their training. This is their opinion. Any and all documents that you receive from the defendant or the defense attorney. You know, what did the... What did the Laundries or Steve Bernalino want you to take a look at? Did they provide information to you? Did they provide a bunch of videotapes and news uh, stories that may have been something that caused or contributed to the emotional distress? What other things did they consider that could have caused the emotional distress other than the statement? Maybe that's something that this expert took a look at. All materials and documents you relied upon, all research that you did, did you look at? Is there research out there? Are there studies out there that show um, that false statements can cause emotional distress? I mean, this is a unique case. You know, what kind of suffering do parents go through when they're looking for their child, when they deal with, you know, the uncertainties? And all of the press coverage that was going on, did that impact the distress? cause any stress to Gabby Petito's parents? All notes, recordings taken during or after your meetings or interviews. Did this, did Day, Miss Day have meetings? Did she interview the um, Gabby Petito? I'm not, I'm sorry, Gabby Petito's parents. Did she interview the Laundries? Did she interview Steve Bertolino? What were her conclusions? Any correspondence or emails? And this is another one. They always talk about the compensation of the experts. Well, you know, it, people think it's a big deal, but typically it, it's going to come out on what she is paid or the other experts are paid to review this file, to come in and give an opinion. Um, that doesn't necessarily weigh too heavily with the jury. They're more concerned with what's the opinion and what is the basis of the opinion. What are they relying on? Any engagement letters, any retainer agreements? And this is interesting, in connection with providing your complete entire file, please omit nothing. So this is covering everything. So if the witness takes a stand, the expert takes a stand and you know suddenly they realize, well, they didn't have this study or this report or they're missing a page or something or other, right? They can't admit they're supposed to turn it all over. All of this is discoverable when it's requested by other side, right? All reports you generated or generated at your direction? Did they make notes when they interviewed? Did they interview parties? Did they look at other studies? All brochures, advertisements, promotional materials that you use in connection to being an expert witness. 
okay, what do these experts say? Why are they qualified to come in and talk about this, right? Why, what is the basis of their training and experience? All invoices, billing, you know, how much time did they spend on this? They spent an hour reviewing the reports. Did they spend 10 hours looking at all the research? Did they have sit down interviews with all of these parties? What, you know, what went on to again, challenge or support the opinion of this expert? Any information, documents, texts, et cetera, that you will use at trial. So you can't be sandbagged. The expert has to turn it all over. If there's things that they relied upon, they need to turn it over. And if there are things they're gonna be using like charts or slides, you know, PowerPoint presentations or additional reports, they need to provide all of that ahead of time to counsel, to each, each party. Any information, documents, objects, or anything else that you claim support your opinions in this case. So again, each side is going to be, see if there's anything else there. Each side, each side is gonna be testing the credibility of these experts. If they're gonna come in now, this is assuming that they qualify to testify. And again, there's gonna be pretrial motions to probably challenge whether or not these experts can come in and give an opinion. Are they an expert in emotional distress, right? What is their basis? or their training and experience? What is their opinion based on? And is it gonna be helpful to the jury or can the jury figure it out on their own, right? Experts come in and they can testify if the information they give is going to be helpful to a jury. Is it relevant, right? Are they qualified? Do they have the experience? Now, the party calling the expert is going to say, oh, they have plenty of you know experience. They've been a therapist for many years or they've been a professor, they've looked at all the ethics, they understand the attorney-client relationship, they understand the role of what an attorney does as a spokesperson or an agent, you know, making a statement, you know, a public statement, especially when, when there was so much media attention, so many people were, you know, they were showing up at the laundry's house, there was threats, there was a lot of things going on that, you know, Bernalino and the laundry's made a decision, I imagine here, Bernalino made a decision to make that statement and whether or not that statement caused the distress and whether it was clearly directed toward the laundries or whether just it was a public statement, you know, and, and the amount, was it a stress? It has to be severe, outrageous conduct and severe emotional distress. It's not simply anxiety or losing sleep. It has to be severe emotional distress caused by the defendants, the laundries and Bernalino. That's what Gabby's parents have to prove. So they're bringing in the experts. And again, it's going to be a battle of the experts, right? It's going to be bought Robert Gordon, who's going to come in on behalf of the plaintiffs, Gabby's parents, and say, this is what I observed. They were under severe emotional distress. And whether or not it's caused, caused by that, that's going to be something the jury is going to decide, whether that statement made it. But this therapist is, I'm sure, going to come in and explain his experience and how much you know, whether it was severe emotional distress. And the Steve Bernalino is going to be challenging that, right? He's asking for all those records because this same Schedule A, this request for documents is being uh, noticed or served on all the experts. So it's not only on Day, Miss Day here, but it's also Robert Gordon is also given the same request to produce the documents to Steve Bernalino and also. Uh, Professor Simon is also having to produce documents um, that is being requested by Gabby Petito's parents. So battle of the experts is, you know, if they qualify, we'll see. There'll be pretrial motions probably to keep out Professor Simon um, by Gabby's parents. Uh, they're probably going to challenge Ms. Day's credibility or, you know, all of the experts' credibility or whether they're qualified. Um, it looks like they probably are qualified to give an opinion. Again, this is just my opinion looking at resumes that I have seen. Um, but it's up to the judge to decide that, right? And if they make these motions. And again, the ultimate fact finder, the one that determines whether or not that statement caused emotional distress, severe emotional distress to the Gabby's parents, it will be the jury to decide. And it's a civil case. So I think in Florida, they have to convince nine of the 12 to find liability. It's not a criminal case where you have to convince all 12. 
And again, this case could settle. It could settle before May. But based on, you know, the other settlement offers that have been made, I don't think this case is going to settle. I think it's going to go to trial. So, um, and we'll have to see whether or not these experts, you know, Professor Simon, uh, Robert Gordon, and Miss Day at this point, whether they will be testifying in the trial as experts. We'll see. There's a lot of moving parts yet to be known. But we do know what they've been asked to produce, all their records, reports, what they've relied upon. And so each side can look through that and see if these experts are in fact qualified to give an opinion. Um, and the judge will ultimately make that call, assuming that uh, the parties file motions to challenge these experts from testifying. We'll have to see. So thank you for joining me. Um, hit that like button. Please do leave a comment. Um, thanks for supporting this channel. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button and uh, anything else. Oh, I'll be posting another video on, oh, this one's interesting too, is um, Gabby Petito's parents' responses to the defenses raised by Bertolino and the Laundries. So stay tuned for that. Thanks so much for joining me. Hit that like button and please do subscribe by, subscribe to and support my work. Thank you very much.